Hey, welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Mind Trailer Talk. My name is Robert Lamb. And I'm Christian Sager. And I'm Joe McCormick, and we're the hosts of the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast, a science podcast in the How Stuff Works family. This is not the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast. This is Trailer Talk, where we come on here to talk about movies related to recent episodes. But today, it's not recent episodes we're going to be talking about, but movies related to a show that inspired our upcoming live episode uh, associated with New York Comic Con. Yeah, this is a glimpse into the future, and <laughs> specifically seven days into the future, because exactly one week from today, we are going to be at New York Comic Con doing a live version of our podcast, and the version that we're going to do is all about the science behind Stranger Things. Now, here's a question. Are we speaking about something that's coming in the future, or... Are our future selves speaking to us through uh, tachyon emissions? It's hard to tell, to yeah. be honest with you. And it really, I think, that we need to go to sleep and see <laughs> if we have a horrific dream that all three of us share. Yeah. And then we'll be able to tell. Now, Kristen, you've got the details on our performance, right? I when do, are we going to yeah. be? All right, so this is on October 6th. Friday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. If you're in the New York area, you don't have to be going to New York Comic Con. It is at the Hudson Mercantile Mercantile in Manhattan. Uh, and you can get tickets right now at newyorkcomiccon.com slash NYCC dash presents. Really just Google New York Comic Con and us. Yeah, or up to up. blow your mind. Or if you go to our Twitter page, uh, which is Blow the Mind, uh, we have it pinned at the top of that feed. Uh, or any of, any of our pages should all have of our stuff. information about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's on all our social media and our site. We have a blog post on our site as well. Yeah. And so an, another cool thing about it, of course, is Stuff You Missed in History class is going yep. on right after us at the same venue. So you can come, take in our Stranger Things uh, themed uh, science discussion. Uh, hang around a little bit, have a chance to possibly meet us, and then you can catch uh, stuff you missed in history classes. They talk about, I believe, uh, the history of comic books. Yeah, they're going to get stuffed. You get stuffed again. They're yeah, gonna, double they're, stuff. They're going to look at the uh, first, the guy who invented comics. Actually, yeah. it should be really interesting. Yeah, so we're having a, a, a double feature night of uh, stuff podcasts mm -hmm. at New York Comic Con. Uh, so what we're going to do here today, because we just kind of wanted to like geek out and have a good time thinking about this show in seven days is we're going to look at four movies that influence Stranger Things but are also related to what we're going to talk about at New York Comic Con. Yeah. Alright, well uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. The first film we're going to look at is one that we've actually talked about here before. Uh, actually, but we last week. I think. Think last yeah. week. <laughs> so, and it may be, may be like the third time we've discussed it, but it's, yeah. it's that. It's one of our favorites. That crucial to what we're talking about here. We're talking about Altered States from 1980. Yeah, such a good movie. We gushed about it last week, but, you know, I was thinking about it after we talked about it last week. You know what we didn't mention was that it was a huge influence as well on that TV show Fringe. Oh, that's like, right. the whole, mm -hmm. like, uh, original premise for the pilot of Fringe was based around Altered States. So I've never seen Fringe. What is it about? Let's see. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's a Fringe sci-fi show uh, about a team including an FBI agent, a uh, grifter, and a mad scientist, <laughs> okay. and they investigate weird science events. Uh, and in the first episode, they do a John C. Lilly style isolation tank, LSD type thing. They do it over and over again throughout mm -hmm. the series. There is also, which we're going to talk about, alternate universes and parallel universes. So has it got a little bit of X-Files crud on it? Yeah, it's like X-Files updated for the mid-2000s. Yeah, like yeah. it definitely has some Lost crud <laughs> on it. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure some of the guys from Lost are involved in it. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. It had its ups and downs, but at the end of the day, when you look at the whole show, it's quite good. Does it end as terribly as Lost in the X-Files? No! The ending is quite good. Okay, so Altered States, the reason we're, br we're bringing it up is, is twofold. On one hand, we're going to talk about John C. Lilly and Isolation Tanks in our live performance, and also this is a film that definitely had an influence on Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. uh, this was directed by Ken Russell, starred uh, William Hurt, Bob Balaban, and uh, Drew Barrymore. She's really? Yeah. Drew Barrymore is not in Altered States, yeah, really? Yeah, what? I think so. Really? Yeah. What does she do in Altered States? Wait, unless so she's in three of the movies we're yeah, talking about? Yeah, unless I pulled up the, the wrong uh, <laughs> wow. the movie database page. Wow, that's she's crazy. I've never <laughs> heard that before. Oh, okay. and get this, to th throw back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, big yeah. part by John Larroquette. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, this movie's awesome, and the reason why we're tying it in, obviously, so if you've seen Stranger Things, you know the isolation tank is a big deal, but also... 
both of these were influenced by the science of John C. Lilly, who we've talked about on the show before, but we're going to cover again as part of this Stranger Things Right, and show. he's in uh, Altered States. He has a yeah. cameo. So clearly the premise of this movie is that you can trip so hard you become a werewolf Neanderthal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention this last week, but since we've got a little extra time, so this is set in Boston, and I you know, am from Boston originally. I watched this for the first time in Boston. There's a scene where he turns into the werewolf primordial caveman guy and he like goes to the zoo and uh -huh. he's like running around the zoo the, Drew Barrymore Drew yeah, Barrymore okay, is we definitely in we got oh, yeah. a confirmation yeah. that is crazy she's in three or four movies <laughs> today what wow it goes altered states the next it, it follows in order as well really oh, really yeah. okay well, this is nuts we'll we should get call this, this the Drew Barrymore cast yeah why is it she needs a cameo in Stranger Things <laughs> well she'll be in season two yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah anyways the zoo is nowhere near <laughs> where his lab is. They make it look like he runs to the zoo. It's uh -huh. like an hour away or something like <laughs> that. Like, it's always funny to me watching that movie. But now what does he do? He like gets there and tries to expand the lion's minds. Uh, something or like doesn't he try to communicate with the primates or something like that? Like he's mm. banging on the huh. on the. Well, cages. I mean that gets into a lot of John C. Lilly's actual yeah. work, trying to communicate with other mind states with the mind states. Of Makes animals. out with the dolphin a little. Yeah, it, look, you know? if you... Oh, that would be great if they did that. Actually, we were just talking before we went on air about how great it would be if there was a John C. Lilly Creature of the Black Lagoon slash Day of the Dolphin style Oh, movie. yeah. Yeah, uh, let us write that creature film yeah. if you still want to do it, Universal. Uh, but anyways, Altered States, fantastic movie. If you've seen Stranger Things and, and you love it and you haven't seen Altered States, I highly recommend it. It's it's so good. Do we yeah. already say that the script is written by Patty Chayefsky? We yeah, we definitely okay. said oh, it last week. It's in the yeah. notes. Yeah, he's, of course, the guy who he wrote the book this is based on, and he wrote the screenplay, and he wrote the screenplay for Network. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you've and ever done that as hell, and I'm not going to take it any more speech, mm -hmm. Chayefsky all the I, way. I'd say like Patty Chayefsky is considered like like top of the line late seventies screenwriter yeah, or yeah, playwriter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is oh man. I, oh, I might watch Altered States before we go to New York again. We should let you know also if you want to leave a comment. We've got our friend Sherry here writing down comments for us, and totally. so uh, we might be able to answer in real time if you want to ask us a question or uh, leave a comment about your favorite. Altered States related movie or yeah. uh, anything like that. And hey, if you're just tuning in or you're scrubbing forward sometime in the future, mm -hmm. hey, we're doing this because we're doing a live show in New York City. New York City. We're going to be there next Friday, October 6th. It's going to be from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Hudson Mercantile in Manhattan. And it's going to entirely be about the science of Stranger Things. That's right. So if you're at Comic-Con or you just happen to live in the New York area, you know where to go. Yeah, or if you want to drive from Alaska to New York, you should leave now. <laughs> All uh, right. Are we ready to talk about our next movie? Yeah, let's move on to our next uh, accidental Drew Barrymore movie. <laughs> um, another film that had a big influence on uh, the Duffer Brothers and Stranger Things. Now, Christian, this one was your suggestion. You it said is. we had to do it because... Yeah. Most people hate this movie, but you love it. I do, right? yeah. Well, I was about Drew Barrymore's age when this movie came out, uh -huh. and I, I just loved it. Like, I just, the, you know, the idea of being a little kid with fire powers and being able to, like, punish adults who had done wrong was yeah, just did, so compelling. So you yeah. spent your childhood dreaming about immolating people around <laughs> Basically. you. Basically. Yeah. I think I've said this on the podcast before. Maybe not in the trailer, but I started reading Stephen King novels when I was five years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The Which one did you start Pet with? Pet Cemetery was the first thing I ever picked up. My mom was reading it, and she yeah. just left it around. Yeah. Inspired your horrifying fear of trucks. Uh, yeah. And Wendigos. Yeah. Exactly. But this movie, oh, now, this movie is, of course, Firestarter, 1984. Um, and uh, I have to admit, I have, I have never seen it, really? and I never okay. read it. It so, was not uh, one of the books I picked up. I watched the first half of this last night. So yeah. it's based on the Stephen King novel, obviously. Yeah. And it's about a girl and her father, and they both have psychic powers that were brought about by government uh, LSD experiment. Or maybe not LSD. It's a different kind of hallucinogen. It's called Lot 6. I yeah. don't know if in the movie they call it the same thing, but in the Stephen King universe, they're the Lot 6 experiments. Yeah. It's basically what we're going to 
to talk about related to Stranger Things. Yeah, so some people, they take it and it makes them claw their eyes out and all that. But a couple people take it and they just have a very pleasant experience. And then they have a child who has amazing pyrokinetic powers where if you make her unhappy, she can burn you. Right. And, and she the, probably will. Dad has mind control powers, but, right. but they're pretty weak. Like his nose bleeds every time he does it, right? Right. And that's a thing that definitely mm-hmm. did inspire Stranger Things because you see in uh, in the show when uh, Eleven uses her powers, she'll get the nosebleed. That's uh-huh. in this movie. Yeah. This is obviously, the connection to Stranger Things, little kid with powers because of government interference, experiments, etc. Now, a cool fact about this movie, it was supposed to be directed by John Carpenter, oh, but man. wasn't. I mean, I love this movie, but I'm such a Carpenter fan. Can you imagine how awesome this would I be? I think it would have been a lot yeah. cooler. So, Universal <laughs> offered Carpenter the chance to adapt the Stephen King novel, but then Carpenter's previous movie bombed at the box office. What was the previous one, Christine? Oh, hold on a second. Okay. So Univer- it bombed at the box <laughs> office. Universal got nervous, and they're like, actually, we're going to give it to this other director that we'll get to in a minute. But before we get to that, you've got to know, the movie that they that made them turn him down was The Thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're like, this guy doesn't have this whole yeah, car that's thing ridiculous. figured out. He's making yeah. The Thing. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's it's doing. It's hard to remember this, but The Thing... Okay, actually, fun trivia and a little bit of a flash forward. The Thing came out, I believe, the same week that E.T. came out. 1982? Yeah, and yeah. and because E.T. was such a hit, The Thing was completely overshadowed. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of people, uh, critics didn't necessarily like it. Ebert gave The Thing, the, the original Carpenter, well, not the original Thing, yeah. but he gave Carpenter's The Thing the same rating as he gave, uh, what, the 2011 <laughs> yeah, remake the remake slash prequel. Or, yeah, it was a prequel, uh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, um, well, secret hint, we're going to talk about a John Carpenter movie today, but it's not going to be the thing. Yeah. Right. Um, um, so, oh. yeah, that's just got to be one of the stupidest moves in a long history of stupid <coughs> moves by Universal produ- producers. I will now, say, though, have you seen Christine? Uh, no. Eh. I, it's been a long time. I remember liking it when I was a kid. Um, but... Uh, it's Firestarter it's not seems like more top his tier cat car. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, this is the oh, prodigy. prodigy video for the song Firestarter. Firestarter. Our producer Ramsey really loves this song yeah. and he wanted to share it with our audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They didn't get Carpenter for Firestarter, but they did get Mark L. Lester. Great. Lester. Yeah. Tell us about him. Okay. <laughs> so he gave us such a cinematic uh, masterworks as uh, Class of 1984, which is about. Punks, violent punks uh, that have to be put down by the teachers. Uh, and then he gave us. I can't believe I've never seen that. Oh, man. So, oh, this is a perfect arc for your life, Christian. Yeah. So you start as a child dreaming of immolating adults, yeah. and then you become an adult and become a teacher and dream about. Uh, taking vengeance on your students. I was going to see this. Uh, th- I was going to say this sounds kind of like if you combined like a. Um, uh, the Warriors with Escape from New York. Yeah, a little bit. Like, there's a, a near post-apocalyptic vibe. Like, But it's based on the idea that, like, schools are so violent and the kids these days are so punk that yeah. they're, they're like, right. skinning the class rabbit and they're upsetting <laughs> the sensitive teacher played by Malcolm... No, not Malcolm. Roddy McDowell. Oh, really? Malcolm McDowell is in the, I want to say, sort of sequel that Lester did, Class of 1999, <laughs> where, of course, Malcolm McDowell plays a robot teacher who's brought in to deal with the punks. Good choice. Now, but he also made one of the most quintessential 80s action movies of all time, right? Yes, Commando. Commando. Have you seen Commando? Long, long time ago. Commando is great because it gets right to the point of what 80s action movies were about. So it starts off about like three minutes in. uh, We're at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house, and he's there with his daughter. The military helicopters land. They're like, we need you back, Arnold. And he's like, no, General, I don't do that anymore. Commando. They leave. Then about four minutes into the movie, his daughter gets kidnapped, and then the rest of the movie, he's killing people nonstop. <laughs> did, not, uh, did Commando come out like pre-Predator but after Conan? Yeah, yeah that it was like right. he was like yeah. building his career at that yeah. point, right? Because Com- even as a kid, Commando struck me as Predator minus the cool aliens. Yeah, stuff, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, well, one other thing I want to say about Firestarter, which uh, our producer Ramsey had a gif up a second ago that showed the wonderful George C. Scott hunting down Drew Barrymore because mm-hmm. uh, he plays like the evil. Native American? Like, he's yeah. supposed to be Native American, but His I don't... His name is John Rainbird, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, who, like, has one eye and hunts down people with powers, whatever. He has a ponytail. And a ponytail. Oh, man. 
All of this is in Firestarter, but it links back to John C. Lilly. Yeah. Because George C. Scott plays a version of John C. Lilly in The Day of the Dolphin. That's right. Um, I have one more thing about uh, about Mark L. Lester. Yeah. Uh, we, we won't have time to really deal with this in depth, but we'll have to come back and do some sort of a prehistoric creature trailer talk, talk because he did a film in 2005 titled uh, Pterodactyl, starring Coolio, <laughs> virtually no one else, and then a bunch of terrible CGI I feel like Coolio did a lot of those straight to sci-fi movies. It's, uh, so this movie's got, I would say, like <laughs> close to Birdemic levels really? of yeah. special effects, <laughs> where it's got these flapping pterodactyls. <laughs> CG. I mean, they've got like four states. They've got like wings here, here, <laughs> here, and here, mm -hmm. and it just goes between them. So there are these jerky gifs that land and then decapitate people, and then Coolio shoots at them with goggles on. Oh yeah. He's got some kind of virtual reality gun. <laughs> uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So okay, I, I think my mind is hurting from this, but is that a prequel to Jurassic World? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't mean, know. maybe it could have been. It's influence. obviously better than Jurassic World. Yeah. But, yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hey, Sherry, do we have any comments or questions? No. Okay, well, All if you right. have comments or questions, now's the time to ask them. Maybe you want to ask us, hey, where can I go see you guys do a live show? Well, the answer is New York City mm -hmm. next week, Friday, October 6th? Yeah. From 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the Hudson Mercantile in Manhattan. And you might be asking yourself, well, that's great, but can we get buttons? Yes, we'll try and have buttons for you, too. We're, so if, that, if you were on the edge... We're desperately trying to get yeah. you shirts, too, but no promises. <laughs> uh, one more fact about <clears throat> the John Carpenter version of Firestarter that never happened. Mm. In that version, they were going to change the George C. Scott villain character, the evil government assassin guy, mm -hmm. yeah. to a woman. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. And I wonder if that's why George C. Scott has a ponytail in his version. <laughs> Like they were trying to bridge I thought the you were going to say they were going to replace was... Drew Barrymore with Kurt Russell. Oh, that would have been <laughs> solid. Oh, man. Kurt Russell just going like, fire powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, we got some uh, images from oh, Pterodactyl, Pterodactyl here. Oh, Pterodactyl. Here it is. Oh, man. Yeah, look at them. They're just so majestic. Wow. Uh, oh. I, I think this is the version where somebody has taken clips from the film and set it to like a Mozart requiem. Yes. So Robert sent this to us earlier, and I thought it was actually the movie. <laughs> and I was like, what on earth is this? Yeah, somebody came and they cut all the like, <laughs> human interaction. They even cut, I think, the the few practical dyna uh, pterodactyl effects out of oh, the film yeah. for this. Because there are a few uh, practical Puppets. beaks uh, pecking at bodies. Okay. Le okay. Lester is the bester. So, okay, mm -hmm. what's another movie that's related to Stranger Things that we love that we're going to talk about similar science to next week in New York City? Similar science to... Um, Alternate dimensions? Oh, wait, no, the next one is actually more that. about government research on aliens, which, th okay, this one's a stretch, but it's a huge, <laughs> well, no, it's it's a a huge, huge influence yeah, on Stranger Things. Yeah, a huge influence things. on Stranger Things yeah. is E.T., the extraterrestrial, yeah. Yeah. which gives you that whole kids riding bikes through the neighborhood vibe. There's a thing about E.T. that I think is especially appealing to our generation, not just because we saw it as kids, mm. but because it reminds us of a time when kids roamed free anywhere and there mm -hmm. wasn't like a parental protectiveness keeping them, you know, stay in the yard where yeah. I can see you. Which is part of why Stranger Things nostalgia is so effective. This fun fact is the first movie I ever saw in a theater. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. I think this trailer version has some really uh, weird looking added special effects from like a later update or remaster. Yeah, th uh, yeah this is the like 30th anniversary. Uh, Samantha asks, are you recording the NYCC show? Yes, we will be recording it. We'll yep. see how the audio from that turns out. If not, we'll try to do a in-studio version of basically the same show. So we will be recording it, but it'll be a lot more fun if you're there live. It will be available for all of you, though, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Samantha also asks, will buttons be available online? I don't know. I bet I we could work that out. Yeah, I think either we'll figure out a way to get buttons to fans, like through some sort of a promotion or we're something, actually or we'll get a merch store up Yeah, there. we're in the process of trying to set up a merch store that you can go and get things like buttons and shirts mm -hmm. and things like that from us. But yeah, uh, I think we only got enough for this show, but then hopefully we'll have more in the future. That's right. All right, so the other thing about E.T., 
Uh, I, I like I like how you're you're pointing out that you know kids are not riding around bikes free anymore. Which well, I mean, means some kids maybe. But, well, you, you know, you know, here in the city, it doesn't look like it. And so yeah, we yeah. probably <clears throat> have uh, benevolent extraterrestrials just dying in gutters <laughs> all over Atlanta <laughs> without children to help them. Right. Because Who's that's going to feed them Reese's pieces. <laughs> yeah. Because <Yeah. laughs> that's the scene that resonates with me the most. I, yeah. I feel like there's whole generations of children, and, and we're still those kids. We're still those kids looking at a possibly dead E.T. in a gutter. And it, Man, wasn't it's that so scary when, when E.T. was like really sick in the movie and you thought yeah. he was going to die? So scary. It's such an emotionally mm. manipulative movie. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm still kind of mad at it. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. I like what's going on Well, hold on. Now. Doesn't E.T. have telepathy <laughs> and telekinesis? Yeah, he certainly does. Yeah, okay. he can move things with his mind and uh, can he like heal He can heal people's cuts? Yeah, yes, he can I mean, seal your skin so. up. You might go as far to say... Uh, that E.T. can do magic things, can do magic stuff, you know? Oh, kind yeah. of like uh, Trumpy in yeah. one of the many E.T. capitalizing ripoffs pod people. That's right, from <laughs> 1983, also known as Extraterrestrial Visitors. Look at this. Is this the Nintendo game? Oh, no, this has got to be oh, Atari. This is the Atari, this is the yeah. Atari yeah. game. Famous, famously infamous. the worst Atari. game of all time. <laughs> but but oh, I, wow. I do think that some of the terrible... E.T. knockoffs that came out after E.T. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's why I, I appreciate the film. And not only the terrible ones, I mean obviously we're talking about its, uh, its influence on Stranger Things. It managed to, um, it created this vibe, it created this, uh, this, this premise that, that inspired all these other works. You know what's an interesting movie that people don't talk about and it like bridges the gap between E.T. and Stranger Things? What's that? Super 8. That was a yeah. cool movie. Oh. I liked that movie. Um, what I was that? Five years ago, it's six years ago, uh, I think a little longer than that. Oh yeah, I think it was came out maybe <laughs> more like two thousand eight or nine. Okay, I don't yeah. know, but yeah, J.J. Abrams, he was definitely going for that '80s Spielberg vibe. Yeah. He wanted to create something like E.T. and I, he sort of got there. Yeah, I feel like one thing. A friend of mine pointed this out to me. Um, my friend Chuck said this, and I think he's right. One of the main things that did not get Super 8 over the hump to make it a real classic is it didn't have a Spielberg score. It oh, didn't have yeah. like a you know a, hum a hummable score that you walk out of the movie singing to yourself. Which Stranger Things does, which well, is probably yeah. why it's such but a huge hit. We'll get to get into this more in a minute, but <laughs> for my money, thank God Stranger Things does not have a Spielberg score. Yeah. Yeah. It has a John Carpenter-esque, uh, Tangerine Dream-esque yeah. score. Now, yeah. before we leave E.T., we should also oh. talk about the greatest E.T. <laughs> ripoff, which is Mac and Me, which if you haven't seen... This is worth your time. Yep, you've <laughs> got to go see it. So this is a movie that tried to take the premise of E.T., where, uh, you know, an alien is saved by the love of a child yeah. and instead transforms that into an alien is saved by the nutritious and delicious taste of Coca-Cola and McDonald's <laughs> products. Oh. Hey, we just got a message from Kat. She says hi. Okay. okay. On, on Hi, Facebook. Kat. Yeah. Hey, Kat. Great to hear from you. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see you in New York City yeah. in one week, seven days, at uh, the New York Comic Con Hudson Mercantile. Um, I'm trying to make it stick in their it's minds. Like a wrap for a second. Yeah. Uh, I have one more thing I want to <laughs> throw. A couple of things I want to throw in about ET. So the screenwriter uh, on this oh. was uh, Melissa Matheson. Okay. And uh, she, she also went on to do a number of other projects, including writing the English script. For Miyazaki's Ponyo, oh, really? when they did the the English uh, dubbed version, that's a, that's an interesting comparison. Those are, yeah. I can see similarities yeah. there. Yeah, uh, and then also she worked with Spielberg on a sequel to E.T. that we never got, but one that I think would have pushed the E.T. franchise more in the Stranger Things direction. It was going to be called E.T. Two: Nocturnal Fears. I'm not making this up. What? And there would have been evil aliens that were introduced that kidnapped the kids. It wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So like it'd be like somewhere be like, else with that. It would be like E.T. on the one hand versus kind of uh, eldritch, like, uh, or, or, you know, cosmic yeah. horror. Like, uh, it'd be like if you mixed E.T. and Howard the Duck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, the e. evil overlord from something. Howard the Duck, the big yeah. claymation crab monster from yeah. outer space. Yeah, yeah. Wow, That's I had no monster. idea. This mm -hmm. whole time, I've been alive for 40 years on this planet, and I didn't know that there was going to be an E.T. too. I was not familiar with it till today. I was just looking around <laughs> for information on E.T., yeah. Wow, okay. So, we got one more movie? We do. That's right. Now, this next movie, I think we should all admit, 
this movie is probably not itself a huge influence on Stranger Things, no. but it's more that we had to feature one film by this director. This movie should influence everybody, though. Right. So this is going to be Prince of Darkness by John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. We picked it because we had to do a John Carpenter movie because John Carpenter is generally, obviously, a huge influence on Stranger Things, even yeah. if this movie itself isn't. Yeah. Both the music and, obviously, like his filming style and mm -hmm. the sort of themes that he covers... But this movie is related to Stranger Things more than The Thing. I th obviously, The Thing inspired the design for the Demogorgon in Stranger Things. But Prince of Darkness is about parallel dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, and, and communication between the future and the past. It, yeah. uh, as we see in the trailer, it has um, the ex always excellent Donald Pleasance yep. and uh, Victor Wong as well, yeah. um, who, of course, would play Egg Shin in Big Trouble in Little China. It's got several cast members from Big Trouble in Little yeah, China, the young, right? Yeah, the younger guy yeah. uh, from Big L Trouble in Little China is also... The actual hero of the movie. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, he's yeah, in yeah. this. Okay. He's in this as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. a guy who's a Tom Atkins stand-in. It's like when you can't get Tom Atkins off of his Coors bender, you call in this guy with the blonde mustache. <laughs> this movie is... Uh, it's my favorite Carpenter movie. It is not yeah. the best Carpenter movie, but it's my favorite. Oh, uh, what year? Prince of Carpenter. Darkness came out in 1987. Yeah. Or maybe she's asking us what year will our presentation at New York Comic Con oh, be? It'll be in 2017. It'll be 2017. This year, <laughs> a week from today. But we will communicate with your past self in 1987. Huh. Hey, how come we're not hearing more about uh, Prince of Darkness? Like, this is uh, an anniversary year for it, right? I oh. don't know. I think they did do a Blu-ray yeah. release, but maybe that was a couple wow. of years ago. This yeah. movie is 30 years old. Totally, oh, I'd yeah. say it feels as fresh as a spring rain to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great film, though. And I think I love all of Carpenter's movies, but this mm. is the genuinely the creepiest movie he's made. Like, it makes my skin crawl every time I see it. It's got some really creepy scenes oh, yeah, in it, yeah. but it's also got some funny stuff yeah, that, that's yeah. funny in retrospect, especially because like it's, got like, uh, <laughs> it's got, like, it's got, like, Alice Cooper in a cameo, yeah. and yeah. he plays this weird zombie out on the streets. There's yeah. all kinds of, like, uh, basically, the, okay, so the premise of the movie is that they find in this L.A. church in the basement, the Catholic diocese has been keeping a big jar of uh, green liquid. It's a jar of Satan. That is yeah. the Antichrist. <laughs> well, and, and the Antichrist wants to bring in the anti-God. Yeah. Right. And so they... I, From an antimatter dimension. Yes. The, it's this, the only movie I know of with a jar of Satan. In yeah. It. <laughs> but the great idea is that it, like, influences all the bad things that are around the church. And so all the every homeless person in L.A. converges on this church and surrounds it so these people can't escape the church. And Alice Cooper is, like, their evil leader. Do we have it, a comment coming in here? This, oh, movie, this movie features what I like to think of as bucket of science, too. Yeah. Where <laughs> the filmmakers bring in a bucket of real science... Uh, not 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 in a way that m is necessary. Like he, mm -hmm. the, the movie functions perfectly well yeah. without it. But uh, it, it's cool that uh, Carpenter brought in tachyon emissions and antimatter, right. and uh, and kind of science it up in a very fun way. That, yeah, I, I appreciate that about it. So you can think of three basic approaches for how you're going to handle the science in your movie. Mm -hmm. You can make your movie actually scientifically sound in the plot. Mm -hmm. Hard to do that with a movie about a jar of Satan. Right. Or Stranger you, Things. Yeah, You can yeah. make your movie uh, just completely ludicrous and basically just a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Or you can do this third route where you have some real science in it, but you also feel free to just go hog wild with yeah. fantasy elements. The other thing that's cool about this in relation to our podcast is that Prince of Darkness protagonists are all scientists. They're all students at mm -hmm. whatever the college is locally, and Victor Wong is their professor. Yeah. And they all have varying, like some of them are physicists, some of them are engineers, and he collects them all. I think there's also linguists involved, and they, they all go to this church to try to figure out what's going on with this jar of green goo. And they have a sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, bring sleeping bags. We, we mentioned the music, and I Let's do think it's... popcorn. <laughs> Now, we, we mentioned the music, and I do think it's worth noting that yeah. um, a, a number of different uh, things seem to have influenced uh, Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein's uh, soundtrack for Stranger Things, including Tangerine Dream and other mm -hmm. notable electronic synth uh, pioneers, but also the work of John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. Now, Carpenter and Howarth, in my opinion, they, I mean, in a lot of people's opinions, they really made some magic with their scores. Yeah. Uh, Carpenter, uh, some people, I think, forget that Carpenter did work with Howarth on a number of the, the more uh, memorable scores for his films, including Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which mm. granted Carpenter didn't, didn't direct, 
but they did the music for it, and Great it's probably soundtrack. yeah. I think it's probably one of one of, if not the best, Howarth Carpenter collaboration, including the Silver Shamrock song. <laughs> well, I, I always cut, I always skip <laughs> that one, but I, the so rest is. Gold. I have a fun story for you guys. Last year for Halloween, because you know we love Halloween around mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. I thought. Oh, I live in this new house. There's going to be all these kids coming by. We'll set up speakers and we'll play music, like spooky music. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I put the Silver Shamrock song on my spooky music mix. And nobody came. Nobody came. Because oh, you were playing that kids. music. Yeah. <laughs> Parents were like, don't go to that house, Timmy. Yeah. They're playing the Silver Shamrock song. Um, other other soundtracks, though, that Howarth and Carpenter collaborated on were Escape from New York, yeah. Big Trouble in Little China, and They Live. What about Assault on Precinct 13? Was that just Carpenter? I think that was just Carpenter, okay. yeah. Okay. Now, this is what, what's interesting uh, here as well is just what sensibilities they bring to the table. So Carpenter, Carpenter's dad was a music teacher, and Carpenter brought like a, a rock mentality mm-hmm. through, uh, through synthesizers, through electronic music. Uh, Howarth too worked in some you know rock bands but he was also a synth tech i believe oh, okay. and he also would uh, go on to get into a lot of new age music um as well as uh let's see what was his other major oh he also did so- uh, 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 sound effects okay yeah. one of the star trek movies in fact i want to say star trek three is that huh. the search for spot that is yep. that's the one yeah. of the whales yeah he did no, some uh, oh wait four no. is the one with the whales no yeah. three is the one where they go to the planet yeah. with spock like possessing people three is the one where christopher lloyd is a klingon Oh, ah, God, it's hard yeah. to remember that. So, no, I have a question. Yeah. Is Hoarth on, have you read about this recent uh, John Carpenter rock album? Rock album? Well, it's not mm-hmm. recent. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have said uh-huh. recent. It was recorded decades ago. Uh-huh. I think it's recently somebody's found it and started oh, putting it on the, the internet. The, what is it? The Coupe de Ville's? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yes, because... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was a part of this because if you if you if you had the old double DVD Big Trouble in Little China, mm-hmm. you get the full music video for the Big Trouble <laughs> in Little yeah. China, like that whole song yeah, that they yeah, do, yeah. and it's Carpenter rocking out with a bunch of other guys, and mm-hmm. I believe Howarth is is in that band. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I've I've heard some of that music. It's not as good as their electronic music for the soundtracks, mm-hmm. but it's also not as bad as you might think. No, no, it's yeah, it's for like '80s rock. It's okay. Yeah. I've I feel like w- as we're coming out onto the stage to pl- to do the Stranger Things, that maybe we should see if John Carpenter can open for us and provide some music. Because uh, I know he's on tour the for Shamrock his Lost song. Themes. <laughs> that would be amazing if they played that, yeah. Oh, man. Silver we'll Shamrock. have to talk to the sound tech guy. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you've just tuned in, that's because we are going to be at New York Comic Con next week on Friday, October 6th. We're doing a live show. We're going on from 7 to 8.30, and then right after us, our colleagues from Stuff You Missed in History class are also going to do a live show version of their podcast. Yeah. So, uh, hey, check, you, let's see, where can they go to check out uh, information about tickets? Because you'll need to buy yeah. a ticket for this. Uh, it's not much at all. What, it's like 15 bucks? 15. Yeah. It's NewYorkComicCon.com. And that's, uh, well, that's their site. But if you want to specifically find the tickets for our show, NewYorkComicCon.com slash NYCC. Dash presents. It's not like I do ad reads on a podcast for a living. <laughs> but yeah, it should be a great show. You'll get a chance uh, probably to, to chat with us uh, afterwards. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll be, be hanging, hanging around. Out. Yeah, um, we're gonna have buttons apparently. So uh, it, really, it's just a win-win situation. We might have T-shirts. We don't know. Yeah, if there may be T-shirts. Wandering around Times Square and you can't find it, just listen for the Silver Shamrock song <laughs> and head in that direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any comments before we head out? Okay. All right. right. Well, thanks for joining us today. We had a good time. And there will obviously not be a trailer talk next week because we're going to be in New York. That's right. But uh, hopefully we will see you there. If not, please listen. I guess it will be two weeks in the future from now, maybe three weeks in the future from now, to the uh, recording of this episode. And, of course, if you don't know who we are, if you're just seeing our faces on the screen, you're like, who are these guys? Check out the podcast. Go wherever you Mm -hmm. get your podcast and look up Stuff to Blow Your Mind. And we'll be there. You can subscribe and find out what we're all about. It's mostly uh, pretty freaky. Yeah. (laughs) All right. See you all later.